This is Innovation Fixation, a series featuring local inventors showcasing the future of technology in our community. Hi, this is Innovation Fixation, and I'm Lisa Monteleone with Tampa City Council. Today we're with John Punzak. He's with Code for Tampa Bay. We're going to find out a little bit about what Code for Tampa Bay is and what they do. So John, tell us about Code for Tampa Bay and what Code for Tampa Bay's mission is. So Code for Tampa Bay is a nonprofit organization that leverages what we call the cognitive surplus of tech savvy people that want to give back a little bit. And it, it's cognitive sort of, surplus. Cognitive okay. surplus. These are smart people and they've got a little extra brain power and so they volunteer their time to come together with us to work on software applications that could benefit like local government or nonprofits in the area. Great. And how do you get involved with Code for Tampa Bay if you're, an, if you're a yeah. person with a little bit of little time surplus. and a cognitive <laughs> surplus on your hands? So look us up at uh, meetup slash meetup.com slash Code for Tampa Bay, or just go right to codefortampabay.org and uh, feel free to join. What we do is we meet each Monday night down at the uh, John Germany Library third floor. It's a workspace called The Hive. It's kind of a maker space. Mm -hmm. Some folks may be familiar with that already. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, we just met last night and it runs about two hours, starts at six o'clock. Uh, we're pretty generous with pizza and sodas for <laughs> people coming together. We seem to get a bigger crowd with each uh, month, so yeah. And do other communities have a code for, say, yes. another city? Exactly. So we're part of a uh, national organization called Code for America and CodeForAmerica.org. They started up about 10 years ago and, you know, same idea, let's help municipal governments, let's help nonprofits to uh, build applications of software as well as uh, work with governments when they open up their data sets. So you may hear about open data policies and things like that. If you open up data, these are volunteer coders, as we call them, that can build applications that can route buses, they can show where you know, shelters are, they can plan evacuation routes, things like that, that are generally applications that the government's you know, gonna get to. Not to, not to say they wouldn't, but it's, it sort of fits a need in between citizens wanting more things and services and governments just you know, prioritizing security and 911 and things like that. So it's a nice niche we fit in. Well, being with a government, I can appreciate the help. Uh, it is a fast-moving segment of technology, oh, yeah. and coding is so important that a lot of people don't realize how they can get involved and what kinds of projects. So what kinds of projects have you done locally? Right, so um, a month ago we had our first, uh, well, third annual, but first where Code for Tampa Bay was involved, Hackathon. Uh, Hack Hillsboro, hashtag hash, uh, Hack Hillsboro, and uh, we brought together about 10 different projects. Uh, Jeff Atwater, the uh, state CFO, mm -hmm. uh, opened up some data sets. He wanted to show uh, where the money's being spent. Roughly 60 of Florida's $80 billion budget every year goes out to contractors, and so he opened up all those data sets and asked the different brigades, Tampa, Orlando, and Miami have different chapters and uh, we build applications that would make it very easy for anyone to you know jump on their phone or on their browser and be able to see search by type of vendor type of spend things like that so uh, some some are going to be in the transparency realm some are going to be in just building websites uh, D tampa downtown partnership tampa trade protocol council these were different projects that the county brought forth as mm -hmm agencies or nonprofits needing a little help getting their software developed. And so our groups, we, we split up 10 different projects. We broke out for a three-day weekend of software and lots of uh, coffee and lots of pizza and things like that and came back on the Sunday afternoon. We had a big contest, gave out awards for the most uh, you know, further effort developed uh, software. And it was really fun. So these are uh, programs that are all volunteer. Great but they're hosted by a county or city government? Sort of. So we're, you know, we're independent, we're a nonprofit. Uh, we do better, any chapter does better when they've got local participation from the government. 
So uh, Hillsborough County uh, was very generous in getting the different uh, folks together. Mm -hmm. uh, we were looking for a little bit more on the data sets that will open up. I think they'll be more forthcoming next year, and so we'll have more opportunity to build applications that map against uh, the data that's being collected by our county. Do you work with nonprofits as well? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So a lot of uh, fill the gap. Exactly. Uh, yeah. is, is the kind of that's work exactly, that That's exactly it. it. Where, you know, there just isn't enough resource, the mm -hmm. technology is moving too quickly, and mm -hmm. especially in the area of uh, like mobile applications, people wanting to be able to access their data from the phones, that's just an area that's tough to get to and requires kind of like state-of-the-art skill sets. And thankfully, we've got, we've got students at USF, we've got high school students, we've got technology uh, you know, owners of small business here in town, we've got people like myself that work for national technology firms coming together, so. Well, you anticipated my next question because I was going to ask about the age groups and the type of people who get involved with Code for Tampa Bay. Yeah. So it, it seems to run the gamut it does. It, it, and really, like we, we developed a project in our hack just for kids, uh, a group called Coder Dojo, people may have heard of, and they built an application that was like an electronic coloring book for 911 administration to get people familiar with dialing 911. We had people uh, come across that were looking to do social media. We had people you know, building applications, like I mentioned, that would, would help different uh, chapters uh, of the agencies here in town. And it, it, it's interesting because you don't have to be super technical coder. We need people like me. I'm in sales, so I don't do a lot of coding, but we need organizational people too. We need people that can recruit and bring in new members and make sure the meetings go you know, with an agenda and smoothly and uh, you know, make assignments, things like that. So uh, you touched on uh, what you do. So how did you get involved and what's your company? Right, so uh, I'm a national sales director for a software outfit called Red Hat. Uh, folks know us from our Linux. Uh, software, it's, it's uh, open source and in technology that just means if you're a coder on a keyboard you can actually see what's in the software, it's open code. And so because of that sort of in our DNA at Red Hat, I became involved with Code for America eh, probably five or six years ago as a sponsor going to their summits, getting to know different cities and counties that participated. And, when the opportunity came along to start up a chapter here, I kind of wanted to get my hands you know, dirty and see what it's like. And so I'm, so I'm, you're the head volunteer. Well, I'm a co-captain. <laughs> yes. A woman named Terry Willingham, who uh, runs the Eureka Factory, she's my co-captain. And tell us how uh, you can, someone out there in our audience can get involved if you're interested in Code for Tampa Bay and helping out uh, and your website and contact information. Right, so it's, it's uh, as I said, it's uh, if you go to codefortampabay.org or uh, we generally coordinate things through a meetup site, meetup.com slash codefortampabay. And right now, we're about a year into it, we meet every month. We've been meeting at the library on Ashley there, but we're looking to expand perhaps into a Pinellas chapter maybe a USF-based chapter. We talked Great. to uh, Mark Sharp from Wonderful. the- Wonderful. From the- Innovation uh, Alliance. Yeah, exactly. I'm the vice chair of the Innovation Excellent. Alliance. So I look forward to working with you and you know, being here with the USF uh, campus in our backyard, yeah. we're broadcasting from University Square Mall yeah. at the studios of TBCN and really looking forward to participating and, and developing that relationship. So oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. If you'd like to be featured on Tampa Bay Community Network, please call 813-977-5200 or visit tbcn.org.